Good afternoon, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to talk about drug delivery to the lungs and why this is an interesting route to delivery. Just to introduce myself, I'm uh, Shabir Mustafa. I'm the Global Key Account Director uh, for Resifarm Inhalation Solutions, and uh, it's my pleasure to, to deliver this presentation. Firstly, I'd like to give you um, a summary of Resifarm, and most importantly, why Resifarm is interested in inhalation drug delivery. Resifarm is a global CDMO, which is headquartered in Stockholm, Sweden. We have 20 plus manufacturing or development sites um, spread across Europe, India, and also the US. We have 6,000 employees and, manuf and manufacture 500 products in various dosage forms, from solid dose to liquids to semi-solids, um, steriles, and obviously, most importantly, inhalation products. And our sales last year was 650 million euros. As said, we, we have 20 plus manufacturing or development sites uh, based around the world, uh, and this is just given an illustration of where we are. And although we're a global CDMO, we like to still think we have a local presence at all our sites. We offer a comprehensive end-to-end -end offering. Uh, on the development side, we offer drug, drug substance development, formulation development, analytical development, as well as clinical trial manufacture. And on the commercial side, we offer the full service from API procurement right the way through to the full packaging services. And we are one of the leaders of uh, implementing serialization on all our lines and working with customers to implement it on their products. I suppose, I suppose the question is, why, why is Restifarm interested in the inhalation field? In May this year, we created a new service uh, called Restifarm Inhalation Solutions. And this offers customers an end-to-end -end service for inhalation products. We have a de development site in the US, in North Carolina, uh, for development of MDIs, DPIs, and nasal sprays. Whilst in the UK, which is still part of Europe, um, we have a site for clinical manufacturing, as well as commercial manufacturing of the dosage forms that I've just mentioned. We offer a full service around analytical services, or testing the devices, etc., and also areas such as extractable and leachable uh, studies. We therefore, we have a real keen interest in inhalation drug delivery. Just to give you a brief overview of the current inhalation market, um, still by far the most used for inhalation drugs are, uh, is for aspirin and COPD, which while still is the traditional therapies, um, are still very strong. Um, and we're expecting those markets to keep growing um, due to factors such as lifestyle and pollution. And roughly for, for both of the aspirin and COPD, there's about 600 million patients globally. US is still the biggest market, um, but Asia is uh, catching up very quickly. And on, on, the, on the device side, about 60% of them are DPIs, while about 40% are PMDIs. Um, the market's set to grow from around 39 billion to 56 billion in the next few years. Oh, sorry, I don't know that. There we go, yeah. Uh, Treatments have been traditionally been long-acting compounds, such as uh, short, short or long-acting beta agonists, or even long-acting muscarinic agonists. And these are still very much in use today, so single-acting compounds are still, still used today. But more recently, um, we've started to see duo uh, or even tr uh, tri-combo uh, compounds, such as the Chiesi Trimbo or the AstraZeneca uh, Baretzi formulation. There, this is a, something that's really advantageous for using inhalation drug delivery. Uh, we, we have the ability uh, to be able to use, to be able to do combo or try combo products. And uh, I'll come back to that in shortly. This has just given you a, a summary of the slides, uh, a summary of the sales um, uh, uh, for combinations of DPIs and PMDIs. And still, you can still see the Advodiscus uh, product is still by, by far the top global seller, um, still followed by uh, Spreva and Symbicort. Um, and whilst, whilst they've been on the market for quite a while, um, they still, still have a very good share of the market. And this is probably the reason, the reason being is um, DPIs are very difficult to um, copy, uh, make generic copies of them. And even in the US, only this year is the first um, generic copy of Adva uh, made by Mylan. So it's still a very profitable uh, area if you have a novel product. But what, why, is, why is inhalation um, route of delivery? Uh, why is it an interesting route to look at? And this diagram just gives you a simplistic look at um, how you can get drugs into the body, into your circulation system. 
Um, you have lots of different ways, so oral, parental, or even through the skin, and also obviously inhalation through the lungs and the alveoli. But if you take something like oral drug delivery, um, which has to go through the gut and through the go through the liver, this can give rise to degradation, metabolism, and poorly soluble drugs can have a reduced effectiveness. These are the advantages of using inhalations. Um, you get a rapid onset of the drug, lower doses are required, um, leading to fewer side effects, and unique uh, efficacy of the uh, multi-dose compounds. So as I said earlier, we, we've started to see com combinational products, um, and this is one of the reasons why we can use lower dose, so you have lower side effects, and you, you're able to combine different drugs together uh, for a final formulation. You also get a uh, unique pathway for drug delivery. So whilst the traditional therapeutic areas such as COPD and asthma um, is still very popular, we can start, we can start looking at other therapeutic areas. So, so listed here is a, a few of the sort of therapeutic areas that, um, that have been assessed. Um, some of these areas are, are, um, are, are in early development, and so, but some of these areas actually have uh, marketed products. But you can see a wide range of different types of therapeutic areas, such as diabetes, migraine, anxiety, smoking sensation, antibiotics, etc. So there's lots of different areas that we can actually look at and are actually being looked at right now. Well, you don't really need to develop a new NCE. Um, you, can, you can develop, you can repurpose old drugs going down the 505B2 route. Um, this, it, this is really key to, key to this uh, development, where you're, trying to, you're, you're, you're finding a new route, uh, which, is the, uh, which is through the, through the lungs, repurposing an old drug, um, and there you have a really powerful package of the two types, so you have the 552B as well as your um, therapeutic area, so you have a really powerful product that you can put to, put to the market. Um, and you don't require um, loads of clinical studies, you only require a bridging, bridging clinical study. And that really is the key to making this a success. And these are some of the um, products out there on the marketplace. Um, so we have, uh, since 2006, Exubria, which is dry, dry powder insulin, uh, all the way through to, to the last year where we've got Embregia for Parkinson's disease. Uh, even this year, we have a, spra a Spravato uh, for antidepressant. So as you can see, the products are there. I mean, this is not limited. There are other products on the marketplace. If you think about something like smoking sensations, there's, there's a lot of products now on the market. And also, um, um, we're starting to see things like cannabinoids, so CBD. Uh, people are asking us whether or not we can develop CBD into, into a, an MDI or a, D, or a formulation. Yeah. And whilst I haven't mentioned some of the challenges, um, there's lots of, lots of great advantages of using drug delivery to the youngs. But there are some challenges, um, you know, where you have to think you have to, to put a device, so a d drug device combination. So you have to think about the device and how they react with the formulation. But also, um, you have to think about the cost. So adding a device to a formulation always asks cost. But I, I don't think they're you know, unsurmountable challenges. They're, they, they can be overcome. So, in conclusion, um, there is a big demand for uh, inhalation drug products for the traditional therapeutic areas. Um, but we also see the value of having um, a drug, drug to the lungs um, uh, for, for different routes, using the 505-2B route, and also things like combining multiple APIs, which will give, give rise to new therapeutic areas. Okay, thank you.